Ellen Lewis is the casting director for the Emmy-nominated Queen's Gambit. I'm at Noel from Gold Derby. And Ellen, I want to ask you, in casting the Queen's Gambit, what was the most important piece to put on the board? Clearly Beth. Um, Beth Harmon's the, the lead of the show. and yeah, But every piece of casting always is incredibly important, down to the smallest role. So, um, but... Beth is the lead of the show, so yeah. casting Beth. And and that was two pieces because there were two. That was three pieces. Three, That's three, so sorry, happy. yes. No, there's tiny Beth, there's mm. our tiny girl, as I sometimes refer to her. And then exactly, and then um, our next age, uh, there, and they're all, Annabeth Kelly is our um, youngest Beth, and then Isla Johnston, going into obviously Anya Taylor-Joy. So exactly, and that was so important to, so that you felt the flow and felt like each of those ages of Beth fit correctly to Anya. Yeah, how do you go about casting like uh, three actors to play the same character at different stages of their life? You know, the, the most important part of that obviously is, well, the most important part is that, that they are good actors, um, but also the physicality is so important. So very early um, after Scott decided to go with Anya, we spoke with him about what he felt she was gonna look like because obviously actors can look different at different points. And so we had a specific photo of her that as we put out what is known as a breakdown, um, which goes out to representatives uh, all over that you are looking at a photo of Anya so that you're really trying to make that match. Hmm. And Isla is also British, which is not what we attend, intended, but that's, you know, she was phenomenally talented and a, and a wonderful match. And Annabeth Kelly is from Texas. So different locations. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I, and I imagine something like that, like you've got to get the look right, but there's also just certain mannerisms and, and, and sort of a whole presence that also needs to light right. the line. Yes. No, I mean, it's so important to the believability of the piece to, to get that correct. And I think we got very lucky um, with both of those young actors, particularly with Isla, obviously. She's very talented. Yeah. The series is called uh, The Queen's Gambit. Uh, what was sort of the biggest gambit or, or, or risk that you took in casting? Well, I think casting anything is a risk and you're, you know, I would say that every time I start a new project, I'm nervous and hoping that it's gonna go well. I was lucky that uh, I worked on Godless for Scott Frank a couple of years before and we clicked very well on working on Godless. So, but any project that I'm starting, I, I always am, anxious and feel like anything could go right or wrong and you just never know you just have to work really hard just like um you know with anything that any of us do so yeah. i would say that i don't know if i'd call it a gambit but every you know any casting job is is hoping for the best it, like the, the, the story of Queen's Gambit really does revolve around the world and journey of Beth, but there are so many people who come in and out of that life and that journey. Uh, how did you go about like sort of um, casting outside of Beth and bringing those other characters into the world? Right. Um, good question. Um, I was lucky also, I will say, in casting The Queen's Gambit that I was working with Kate Sprantz, uh, who has been my associate and partner over a number of years, as well as Olivia Scott Webb in England, who, you know, originally Queen's Gambit was going to be shooting in the United States, and then they decided to shoot it in Berlin. 
So we knew that we were going to need a partner in London and got very lucky being introduced to Olivia. And then also in Germany, um, working with Annalena Slater. So, you know, I would say that this was a group effort in many ways, but, you know, obviously um, the young men that Beth is surrounded by was a fun and interesting challenge. Thomas Brody Sangster, we had cast in Godless and, you know, loved him from that. So in the beginning and speaking with Scott, we knew that we wanted one of the young men's, yet one of the young men to probably be Thomas. And it was going to try to figure, figure out where, where, which role Thomas was going to fit. Um, and then Harry Melling, again, it's just, it's a happenstance that those two young men are British because we didn't, again, set out at that point, we didn't know that we were going to be shooting in Berlin. And Harry Melling, I had just seen in Buster Scruggs, the Coen Brothers film, and thought he was fantastic, as well as the fact that I'm a big Harry Potter fan, and so is Kate. So, you know, we had been thinking about uh, Harry for a while and where he might fit in something that we work on. And then we were really lucky that Olivia knew Jacob Fortune Lloyd um, so that those pieces of, of this puzzle fit together. Um, obviously, casting Mr. Scheibel was incredibly important and we were very, very lucky that although Bill Camp was not in Godless, I had made Scott aware of him during that process. And so Scott had Bill in mind pretty much right away. And he's the soul of the piece. So, you know, we were really lucky that Bill was open to doing a role which originally appeared just in the first episode. But then as I say, he just is, is the soul of the piece. Um, yeah. You know, I, and, and the most important thing is that to have a director and writer like Scott Frank, who is open to ideas so that at, in casting for him, it's a very safe space. And also knowing that any actor that you bring to him is going to feel so lucky to be there because Scott loves actors and he makes the entire environment from what I've heard, because I don't go on the set, but I know that um, as I've heard from actors how fantastic the set is in every way. And uh, he makes everybody feel important and that you're part of the whole. Mm -hmm. So we're just so lucky to have Scott as our, our fearless leader. Yeah, you, you've been nominated for the Emmy Award for Best uh, Casting for a Limited Series. Uh, and also the Queen's Gambit has done very well with nominations too, picking up quite a few, including members of the cast. What What is it like for you? Like, I'm not going to ask you as much as what was it like for you getting your nomination. What's it like to see people you've cast get nominated over other people you've cast like you know so sort of like some of them get picked out I know you know I don't try to think about what it's like to have people get cast over somebody else mm. it was certainly thrilling to have Thomas cat you know get that nomination because I just think he's such I think he's such an interesting character in the piece mm. and he embodied it in a way that I could never have fully imagined um, so wonderfully. And then Moses Ingram, who had just graduated from Yale Drama School and who Kate had seen uh, in her presentation from school and, you know, was able to contact her through, she'd already been signed by an agent. And it's absolutely thrilling to know that this was the first piece that she appeared in. And she's so deeply talented um, in every way. So 
it's thrilling. And then do I wish that maybe a couple of other people had gotten nominated? Sure. Why not? <laughs> but it still is thrilling that these two young actors got nominated. Yeah. The, like, um, what was I going to say? Um, I've never spoken to a casting director uh, before. And I, like, often thought about casting directing and what makes a good casting director. Because I feel like you're, like your layman uh, or, or your sort of uninformed person, which I am one of, would just go, who's the best cast? Let's look at the list of names. Who are the best people? That's But as a casting director, when you see cast or when you when you watch films, watch TV, what do you think like makes good casting directing? What are the things that you go, oh, that was done really well? You know, if uh, first of all, I'm honored that I'm the first casting director that you're interviewing and you yeah. should interview many casting directors. I, I think a gold derby we have, but I've never got a song like it's just the how it right. works out. Yeah. It's great. I mean, it's just great because obviously I think what we do is so essential and so important were the first people on outside of the writer mm. and the director. And, you know, we're the first person who's interfacing with the director. And I guess what I would say, I think there are so many great casting directors. Um, if, you know, I'm looking to fall into the world mm. that whatever that may be, and that's, if, if I believe the world, then I think something is really well cast. Mm. You know, just, it, it seems kind of like, but it's far more challenging, I think, than people think it is. I think that um, casting is an easy thing for people to sit and think that they can do this because they like actors and they know actors and I can think of people, but it becomes much more specific and um, pointed and uh, instinctual. I mean, I think there are many things that that go into um, good casting, but they're fantastic. I mean, every fellow nominee for the Emmy this year has done amazing, amazing work. So I'm just mm -hmm. honored that I'm included and yeah. Kate and Olivia, so. Yeah. Well is the is the what's the bigger challenge for a casting director is it getting like you know famous mcgee on board with the cast is it about discovering a sort of unknown talent or is it is it just finding people who work well with each other in that world you know it's funny i think it's the third actually mm -hmm. i think it is more i think about people who work well with each other in the world. I mean, many times, I mean, Queen's Gambit, Anya was not, we did not have Beth when we started, mm -hmm. which is kind of great because then we were able to sit with Scott and explore ideas, but obviously Anya clicked as soon as Scott, you know, he watched a wonderful movie called Thoroughbreds mm -hmm. and saw her work in that and knew that he wanted to meet with her. Um, but, yeah, I would say that it that it is that third element of just what I said, which is about creating a believable world and people who somehow instinctually seem to fit together. Hmm. Um, yeah. the, you um you uh, are nominated this year for the Emmy. You're no stranger to the Emmys. You've won two for casting in the past. The first was, I believe, in two thousand and four for Angels in America, uh, limited series, uh, which did very well at the Emmys. Uh, that show as well. Um, and then you won again for Boardwalk and a uh, Boardwalk Empire. What was it like uh, winning that first Emmy? And sort of looking back on it these years later, what what reflecting on that moment what is it like well i mean the most important thing is that mike nichols directed angels in america uh it you know by tony kushner it's one of the great plays ever written mm -hmm. it was an honor to work on it with my mentor julia taylor who is really like the greatest casting director in the world mm -hmm. and, and so you know i would say that Looking, I mean, it's just it's 
such an important piece in literature, angels, as well as in theater. And then the fact that Mike Nichols was able to realize it so beautifully um, in, in a TV piece. And then for our work to be recognized, I mean, really, how did I feel? Terrified. Um, <laughs> Juliet did not go with me to the Emmys and then we won and I made our producer Celia Costas go up on the stage with me because I was so nervous, but it was absolutely thrilling. And Boardwalk was so fantastic. I shared that with Meredith Tucker, um, who's a great casting director as well. And, uh, you know, that was great because Martin Scorsese, who I have collaborated with for many mm. years, directed it and, you know, I mean, it's just such an honor to have your work recognized in any way. And just getting nominated is, is such an honor. So, you know, this is great. I mean, I'm, I'm so proud that everybody liked Queen Ga Queen's Gambit and that the casting was recognized. Mm. You're such a, like... Uh incredible sort of career when you look at all the different films you've worked on the different actors that have been part of cast you've put together um both big names and little names like you know this really runs the gamut so i encourage people to go to internet movie database or something online but, or, or or another site and check uh the things you've done what's a lesson from that career that you know you you've carried with you and what's sort of the biggest thing you've sort of learnt throughout your journey as a cast director you know, I, got, I was very lucky because I worked for Julia Taylor for eight and a half years. I was her assistant and then associate. And um, I don't know if there's a lesson. Casting is very visual to me, but it's also about a lot of details, which, you know, it's not just about thinking up the ideas. It does get into schedules. and But I would say that I love casting the tiny roles because I think that that so informs what you're watching and seeing, you know, the one line or the one word people. So, I mean, and also one of the very most important things about casting is liking actors. Um, and which I do very much, I respect their talent and making this environment warm when they come in to audition. Now we're doing that on Zoom um, because it's a very difficult career to be an actor and it's filled with a lot of rejection. So I would say that, you know, I, but curiosity, I still, I just love diving into a world, um, whatever world that. That, and I've been very lucky with the people that I've worked with, uh, the directors that I've worked with. And, um, I, you know, I'm really happy after all this time that I still love it. Yeah. Oh, it's great. And uh, just to finish off, Ellen, uh, what, what do you love about, what do you just love about the Queen's Gambit now that that's done and we see the success and stuff? What, what do you think worked about that series? I think Scott created an incredible world that, you know, when... I read it, I thought it was a phenomenal story about a very complicated young woman who had a lot of challenges. And I think that Scott made a world where Beth's challenges, her struggles and her accomplishments shone through, um, through her journey and the people that surrounded her um and i think scott just did an incredible job creating a very real world out of something that was a little bit hard to imagine in the beginning and mm. he did just a magnificent job so yeah i i I've, I've said to others that like really like you're watching the queen's gambit thinking boy what a great performance and story for beth and then the penny drops in the final that it really was an ensemble piece in a lot of ways, as great as she is, as great as Anya is and as great oh, as Oh, and I really appreciate that, Matt, because it's true. I mean, she is surrounded by, she definitely carries this piece and you're drawn to her, but everybody who surrounds her are, 
compelling and interesting, I think, in their own way and, and make her story that much richer. So, yeah. So, um, no, no. All, and all the best for the upcoming Emmy Awards. Um, and, and look, look, uh, people often say, like, we should be, have there should be an Oscar for best ensemble, best cast. It really, there should be an Oscar one day for best casting director. I think that'd be really cool or best casting. Yes. One um, day. One yes. Day. Like maybe. This coming Oscars would yeah, be why not? for it any point. No, no time like the present. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, thanks, thanks so much, Alan. All the Thank best you, for the man. Emmys. People Thank watching this you. interview, people watching this interview can go to goldderby.com. Make your award predictions. Cool. It's great to meet you. Thank you so much. No, it's so great to chat about the show. Um, thank you. Thank you for your time.